Hi. Hi. In what way is this Stafford show different to the other Stafford show? Um, well, it's different in a lot of ways. I think um, in terms of how it looks, how it, the production values um, it are very cinematic. If you haven't seen it, you will. Um, it looks like a movie. Um, uh, it's serialized storytelling as opposed to episodic, which is not entirely new to the Star Trek world. They did it on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but this is all serialized. It's a 10 chapter story. Uh, and um, not only has no Star Trek series ever had a protagonist who is within the story nine, in his early 90s, but I don't think any television show ever has had as a hero a character who is so far along in the journey of his life. So right off the bat, that's three different topics. Do you have any uh, political sure. social issues uh, do you impact on the story or the show? Um, in the sense that all stories are impacted by the world in which they were created and the people who created them. Star Trek has a rich history of um, dealing with some of the issues of its time, but it doesn't deal with it in a usually in a terribly on the nose, like direct out of work kind of way. It's more a matter of um, finding ways to explore and and make the themes resonant um, than sort of like on the nose direct commentary. The new series is darker and bleaker than the next generation, for instance. Is it still able to convey the same message that Star Trek always did? Absolutely. I, I don't know that I agree with you that it is darker. I think, uh, how much of it have you seen? Three episodes. Okay, so you've seen the first three. You're at the beginning of a story. At the beginning of a story, usually things start to go wrong and get up, right? So you can't really judge the whole story based on that. I, there is no way to tell a Star Trek story without maintaining the aspirational nature of Star Trek and without retaining the sort of hopefulness that is always at the top of the So no matter how hard things are right now, no matter how dark it's going to be, there's always going to be I, I would agree. I mean, Star Trek, I think people who really know Star Trek know that things are often dark on Star Trek. I mean, things are pretty dark at the Battle of Wolf 359. Um, things were very dark uh, during the Dominion War, really dark. Some of those episodes of Beast Space Nine are almost pitch black. And um, there were episodes of Voyager that, that were, uh, where things were quite dystopian, even on board the ship, even on board the Voyager. So this is nothing to start with. And what was your plan to reach the fans like on the mountains who would love the next generation and the fans who would start to explore the, the Star Trek universe to reach all of those fans? Yes, yes. I mean, we thought if we didn't do that, we had, we had to do both. We had to try to find a way to tell a story that if you knew nothing about Star Trek, you would enjoy, and if you knew a lot about Star Trek, you would enjoy. It was a balancing act. It is a balancing act, but it's that's how we had to do it. First question: uh, It's reported to be a walking Star Trek canon. How much of honor is that? Uh, it's sort of true. Here's the thing: There's a lot of weird, random facts that are like burned in my brain because I've been writing it for so long. Once you like have to research something and learning, you just sort of know. It. If there's something I don't know off the top of my head, I usually know right where to go to find it. So I'm, I'm not an encyclopedia. Not quite. She is a human being. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you.